Hello, I'm Rabbi Victor Appel of Temple Emmanuel in Westfield. With this week's Torah portion, Vayechi, we bring our reading of the book of Genesis to a close. Vayechi, which means and he lived, referring to Jacob, is about the end of Jacob's life. Our portion begins, Jacob lived 17 years in the land of Egypt, so that the span of Jacob's life came to 147 years. Those 17 years were a gift to Jacob. He never imagined he would have that much time. Jacob was already an old man when he was reunited with his son Joseph. Now, at the end of Jacob's life, he demonstrates the wisdom he has acquired over his years. Jacob gives Joseph specific instructions for his burial and makes Joseph promise to take his body from Egypt and bury him in the cave of Machpelah. Joseph, accompanied by his sons Ephraim and Manasseh, go to Jacob's bedside. Jacob, who could no longer see, kissed and embraced his grandsons. Joseph places his sons before Jacob so they may receive his blessing. Manasseh, Joseph's oldest, would receive his grandfather's right hand, for the right hand was the symbol of primacy. Ephraim would receive his grandfather's left hand. But Jacob crosses his hands so that his right will be on Ephraim's head and his left hand will be over the head of Manasseh, the firstborn. Joseph attempts to move his father's hands, assuming that the blind Jacob has mistaken one for the other. But Jacob reassures Joseph, saying, I know, my son, I know. He too shall become a people and he too shall be great yet his younger brother shall be greater than he, and his offspring shall be plentiful enough for nations. Is Jacob repeating the pattern that played out in generations before him? Or is he attempting to end the cycle of enmity and jealousy between siblings? In a collection of interpretations known as Itere Torah, Rabbi Tzvi Elimelech of Dino writes, when Jacob saw that even though he chose the younger Ephraim to serve as the firstborn in status, despite this, Ephraim did not exalt himself over Manasseh, and Manasseh was not jealous of Ephraim. Jacob said to himself, if only the children of Israel could be like this, free of arrogance and envy. Therefore, Israel is blessed specifically through them, so that like them, there should not be jealousy and competition ruling them. Rabbi Aaron Pankin of Blessed Memory explains, Aside from its evident moral message, this explanation speaks volumes about the hope of a grandfather for the future generations of his family. If Jacob's sons are anything after all, they are jealous and competitive in the extreme. But here on his deathbed, Jacob expresses his fervent hope that the competition and tension that ruined his son's generation can be avoided in the next and further in all future generations of the Jewish people. And so, when we bless our children or grandchildren, we pray they will be like Ephraim and Manasseh. It is a blessing and a fervent wish for peace and harmony. Let each of us resolve to bless those we love, and may we each become an unbreakable link in the chain of our history. Shabbat Shalom.